Hi, and welcome to Build. I'm your host, Jenna Bush Hager, and today we are joined by a country music superstar who's received every accolade that the recording industry can bestow upon an artist. We're talking about Garth Brooks. <laughs> I just happened to have a poster of him in my childhood bedroom. He's been awarded CMA Entertainer of the Year six times, and he's been inducted into the International Songwriters Hall of Fame in New York, the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame, and most recently, the Musicians Hall of Fame. He's smashed record after record, touring stadiums around the world, and just recently, he and his wife, who I also have a girl crush on, Trisha Yearwood, sold 6.3 million tickets on their world tour, making it the biggest tour in history. But before he comes on to the stage, let's check out a video of Garth in action. Um, this is my life. Everybody's been telling you what they do for a living. This is what I do to live. We just came here to raise some hell and have some fun, so what do you say? Let's get started! Music is easily the most underestimated power that this earth and mankind has ever known. It is the voice of hope. Garth Brooks has sold more albums than any solo artist in the history of the world. More than Michael Jackson, more than El John, more than Elvis even. You have to write. You're always writing with every breath you take. I can do this now, like all day long. They call it taking chances. I call it doing what people don't expect you to do. As an artist, as a songwriter, both. I have to believe that resting on what you've done are for people who are through doing. I'm not done. I'm the only artist to have seven Diamond Awards. What I find is music is a collector of soul and a collector of fun and joy. You mix that up and it doesn't matter how many people you're playing for, that goes out the window. I love looking out, seeing these people in their faces. People bring their signs, and all of a sudden you're talking to them. And these big ass places shrink down to just one on one. We'll make a deal. If I'm still alive when Brooks goes to college, we'll pay for her college. And you talk about the music and the difference that it's made in their lives and in yours. And you go I am the guy next door, man. And you kind of get to put your life to music. So it's pretty simple. You just get out there, you do your best, you say your prayers, and you bring your helmet. And now we are so lucky because we have Mr. Garth Brooks. <laughs> that was very sweet. I thought you were gonna say Mr. Yearwood. Oh, that probably well, would, would you prefer Mr. Yearwood? Mr. Yearwood, I'll answer to that, yeah. <laughs> She's a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right here with us. When you watch this, I mean, that sounded like a soundtrack to my childhood. I heard people kind of clapping and singing along. This was your life, all of these songs. When you watch a video like this, are you like, dang, I've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool, I've, I've, I've got to do a lot. This was very sweet. I've been handed a lot of great opportunities and uh, hopefully just uh, had uh, as much fun as one person can possibly have. So people talk about a bucket list all the time, you know, what's left to be done. And for me, there's one thing up there, it's just one more day like today, man. That's, that's what I'm, uh, you know, you're with the love of your life. Hmm. Your children are healthy, uh, kind of on their path, and you get to play music for a living. I don't know how it gets better than that, you know. We are here celebrating the Legacy Tour. This is his Legacy Collection, rather, which is this new collection of vinyl that Garth has put out that has gone crazy. I mean, people really bought it. I, I, <laughs> trust me, I came from the vinyl world. I can't believe vinyl is doing this again. I'm so happy for the music. So when you were a little boy growing in, up in Oklahoma, I've read, and uh, I hope my research is right, that you were interested in music. You came from a musical family, but you also loved sports. And no, sports was it. Sports was it. The only thing that kept me from being professional sports was my athletic ability. <laughs> that was it. Oh, man, I, I had the want, I could tell you that. But uh, my mom sang. My sister was a fabulous singer, blues guitarist. So uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's the only time in my life where I feel like I don't have to try. 
Mm. It's a sweet thing to get to go out and play music. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment when you were growing up or in college when you just thought like, okay, this is, this is it. You know, I'm, this is what I want to do. No, I mean, you know, when people go, hey, when did you know something was happening? Mm -hmm. For me, it was in this, in this city right here. It was Central Park, HBO, 1997, came out of the hole. <laughs> I got to tell you, when I looked up and saw that many people, the first thing that went through my mind was, wow, something might be happening here. <laughs> I, I had no idea. So uh, I think that was the first time where I really, really thought, hey, this, this could be, something could be going on here that you want to be a part of. Mm hmm and t speaking of vinyl, did you grow up listening? Like, who was your inspiration? Who would you reach for to put on the record player? Well, your dad's records, of course. You know, <laughs> and you, you never touch your dad's records, but you'd steal Haggard records, Johnny Horton yeah. records, Buck Owens records. My brothers were into uh, Towns Van Zant, Tom Rush. My sister was into Carol King, uh, Janis Joplin. And then uh, as we got older, James Taylor record came. Uh, James Taylor records came in the house. Here comes the Eagles. Here comes Billy Joel. Here comes uh, all these guys, and then I find a cat named George Strait. But this is eight track now. Now we're yeah. talking, there, right? So uh, I wonder when the eight track will come back. <laughs> I hope never. <laughs> I really, I really do. If anybody remembers eight tracks, in that between that third and fourth track, it would always fade the song out, and then it fade back up. The worst thing you can do to music. So I hope the I hope the the resurgence stops at vinyl. <laughs> And so those, when you started writing your own songs, you, as I read um, in your bio, I mean, writing is really part of what makes you this epic artist. When you started writing your own songs, like, how did you begin? And were they any good? Do you have a gut feeling like, okay, this one, this one could, could make it? I mean, they're all just, uh, they're all just pictures of you. And so the craziest thing about this, the sweetest thing somebody can do for you is to let you be you and still love you. Mm -hmm. And that's the coolest thing. That's what these people do. They let me be me, flaws and all, and for some reason it seems to be okay. Well, that's what songwriting is. You're just taking a picture of your inside. And my luckiest days are when you get to sit down with songwriting partners, with the people that have filled these things with songs that people credit you for writing. Um, but I got to help a little bit. And then there's a lot of songs like the dance, friends in low mm. places. I didn't have anything to do with writing those, but I take credit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, well, the dance was my first kiss when I danced at Camp Longhorn to the dance. Um, I no. kissed the, he didn't want to kiss me back. I can tell you that, <laughs> but I promise you people, little girls around Texas remember that song. <laughs> that's uh, it's, it's so beautiful. It's uh, I, I wish I could say I wrote it, but that's Tony Arata at a little Tybee Island out of Georgia and just the sweetest man on the planet. Also wrote a song called The Change, mm -hmm. which for me just tears me up too. So um, they're all in here and just um, your heart and soul's in here. When you put a collection like this together, it's different than putting an album because it's really your life's work. Do you look at it and think like, okay, some of these I remember where I was when I wrote it, and they, do they feel like these little pieces of you, these memories of of all of what you've done? Oh yeah, they they always will because my thing is, even if it's something you didn't write, if you can't relate to it, don't cut it, don't record it. To any artist out there, the worst thing you can do is have a song that people love that you never want to play again. <laughs> don't do that. Fall in love with everything. So uh, the beautiful thing in here is it's everything from that summer, which I was lucky enough to get to pin uh, with Pat Alger, all the way to um, Friends in Low Places that I didn't do. But, you know, every journalist that says, hey, if there's one song you wish you never played again, and they're hoping to hear this, and you go, I can't pick one because try to remember Friends in Low Places, I just play the opening four notes <laughs> and never have to do anything again. I mean, that's it. I just listen. So I mean, we probably all could sing it, <laughs> couldn't we? <laughs> if you want us to. Um, we'll refrain. But, um, you to, you're on an epic tour right now, the stadium tour, which yes, is huge. It's cool. You sold out the Mile High Stadium, you know, more tickets than ever. But these are huge venues. And I loved on that video where you said you make it feel like it's one-on-one. Oh, it's, on one. it's small, man. It's, it's unbelievable. Because I never thought. That's why we stayed away from stadiums forever. One, you're just scared to death. You're not going to sell any tickets. <laughs> Two is uh, you just don't want it to be cold. It's the warmest feeling on the planet. It's, it's amazing how these people have shrunk this building. You play unanswered prayers there? Mm -hmm. 
and it's like you're sitting at home with 85,000 of the closest friends you got. Uh, <laughs> it is awesome. And, and so is that partly you, though? Do you, as an artist, have to kind of create this intimacy? I don't know. I would love to tell you that everything you saw in that video right there, I planned. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you're taking the ride. I mean, this is something much bigger than Garth Brooks. You're talking, uh, you know, the gifts of God above, the gifts of the people that have fed you when you couldn't afford to feed yourself, housed you when you couldn't afford to be housed, and they've taken this whole journey with you. So, you know, there's the, there's the big story at, at what used to be called Fanfare, where we set up for 23 hours and signed autographs. And people go, wow, how'd you do that? You go, hey, look, there wasn't anybody there that wasn't there 23 hours as well. Mm. Right? Because you're not going to stand out there and sign for nobody that's there. So everybody waited. And so that's kind of our career is everybody's in on this. This belongs to everybody. And I'm lucky to be a part of it. When you create a collection like this or you sell out these stadiums, you know that your fan base is strong. But it must have changed over the years, like the way you connect do you feel that yeah. way or, or it's sort of stayed the same? No, no, it's, it's all that way. Whether social media is here or not, you know, it's still about trying to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's like you. I mean, I'm sure you have this same philosophy that whether you're talking, interviewing one person or five person, you're going to establish a one-on-one -on -one communication with each one. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you can do that with 80,000 people because they want it. They want to do it. When I'm in the audience, I'm 17 years old. I'm on the 13th mm -hmm. row. I'm going to Queen with Tammy Sherman. Who is Tammy? Your Tammy's girlfriend? Tammy's my high school girl. Yeah, she was the was guy Was she was the, the unanswered prayer? She was, no, she was oh, not. Okay. That, Tammy, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, but... <laughs> No, Tammy was every every high school's dream guy to be. She's just a doll. And uh, so we went to Queen, and all I wanted was three seconds for him to look at me and me go, hey, man, thank you. Thanks for all the Friday night football games. You got me pumped up to play. Thanks for all the fun, you know. And then it's funny. Now when you're on stage, all you're doing is looking for that three seconds with each one going, thank you, man. Thank you for my life. Thank you for this is what I get to do. All the band and crew here wants to thank you. It's, uh, it's funny that exchange, but that exchange has to happen or it's, it's not an artist at all for me. We heard on that video too, you toured with Mrs. Yearwood. Yes, Mrs. Yearwood. <laughs> Mrs. Yearwood, who I love. Y'all yes, need a, to watch her cooking show. <laughs> And that sold out like you can't believe. I mean, the biggest tour ever, is that correct? It was the biggest one in North America. We were very, very lucky. We had announced our retirement in 2000, and uh, my mom had a serious problem with the empty nest syndrome because I'm the last of six kids, and we watched it happen. And I think Ms. Sherwood started to see as the girls started leaving the house. Yeah that I was having the same problem. And she said, would you ever think about going on tour again? <laughs> I said, well, hell yeah, I'd think about it, but with the people. And uh, Chicago opened with uh, 11 sold out shows in one city, and it was just fun from there forward. And they were so sweet. For three years, they showed up to watch my big ass run around that stage <laughs> and, and have fun. And we uh, sometimes we were there till 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, and enjoyed every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And what's it like to tour with your wife? Well, when you find somebody that you can't spend enough time with, <laughs> when you find somebody that for the first time ever in your life, forever's not long enough, then you just want to just want to be with her. And she's funny. I'm sure you've been around her. She's she's sharp. We'll get in an argument. There'll be so much blood, and I'll go, "Hey, whose blood's all this?" <laughs> it's mine. She's so she's so quick witted, man. She just slices you to pieces, and and uh, that's just it's fun to be with her. She's. Uh, she never lets it go unchallenged. We were peeling potatoes the other day in the kitchen, and we're both throwing in this bowl. It's got water in it. Well, as a guy, I'm just throwing it. It's splashing up against the bag. She's like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I start peeling, and she looks at me, and she goes, no, no, it's okay. Throw them in the bowl. I said, here, take this potato, go around the island, shoot for it. <laughs> she goes, Really? Said, yeah, go ahead. She's back there missing it, throwing it, and laughing. And I said, now look, isn't that a lot more fun? <laughs> and so uh, it was a great day for us. She, uh, I might have taught her something. <laughs> <laughs> How has she influenced you musically? Has she? I mean, it must be. Yeah, she gives you courage. She's the one that's always there going. You know, she was the one I called. I had a trouble. I had trouble with my career in 90. 95, 96, had a new regime come in for capital. 
and really had me convinced that my career was over. And she was the first call I made. She's my best friend, even when we were married. And uh, she said, she, the talk she gave me gave me the courage to go on and, and, and do my thing and, and find out really what the story was. So she's always been that person that's in your corner, that's always fighting for you, that gives you more courage than maybe you have yourself. Mm. Is that fair? And I got to tell you, there's something about a woman's courage that's 10 times stronger than a man's courage. And I, I think it's just because that a woman just uses this and this a lot faster than this. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are fake. These are thin. It's only going to get you so far. But your heart and your mind, that wisdom of a woman, I think is uh, going to get you where you want to be as a man. So I like who I am with her. And uh, I want to like who I am the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, I, I can go She's home and one. cry myself to sleep. <laughs> She's a good one. Let's talk about this legacy collection. Why vinyl? And are you surprised by how, how much it's taken off? I'm stunned by how much it's taken off. So we have this thing called Inside Studio G every Monday night. And the question that kept popping up, popping up is when you're doing vinyl. And you think, well, surely it's got to go away, right? I mean, it's just, and vinyl kept growing and kept growing. But vinyl pieces, if you've ever gone out to get vinyl pieces, they're like, 29 bucks, 39 bucks. It's like, that's not what we do. So we got with a company to figure out how to put seven of them in here with seven totally uh, same titled CDs, but with bonus tracks on the CDs too. So, because a lot of people don't like to break into their vinyl. Yes. So you can hear it uh, either way. We were also lucky enough to be part of the generation that recorded in analog, not the new digital. And then had it all transferred to digital later. So you can have your pick of hearing it as originally recorded in analog or hear it in the remix remaster, which uh, most of the radio stations today are playing all the remix remaster because it fits the format better. But the original recordings are in one box and the remix remaster in the other. So it, uh, it allows you to choose the way you want to listen to the music. Um, and this had record-breaking sales. We like, were we were fortunate. Like I wanted to say, over oh, nearly eight hundred thousand of them. I we, mean, we've been we've been very lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now know that each one has seven albums in it, so that that eight hundred thousand still comes down to pretty good little windows for us. They they're handmade and they're hand packed, so it's going to take like eight months to build, right? So we can only put them up for sale when they have the material or the, mm -hmm. the stuff. So the first 60,000 boxes went in the first window. Then we had to wait till they created 60 more. <laughs> did it, you think there was going to be a second window or did you I, think? I was stunned. Uh, I said, you got to be kidding me, vinyl? <laughs> and uh, it was good. We got off to a rough start uh, in the ordering process because the, the company was doing, these things are numbered. That's the crazy thing yeah. there. Anything that's rare, we're something, number them. And, and we're making so few of these that we're numbering them. And so people got to request their own number. Oh my gosh. And that backed everything up. <laughs> Once the system got running, they blew through uh, the first window, they blew through the second, and we're about to open the third window this Friday uh, coming up. Well, I think that's why we're here today at, at Build. You have an announcement, which I think is that. I might, yes, have, I might have just announced it, <laughs> which is fine. Yes, um, ma'am. Uh, but this is the first time we're opening it to the public. We kept it with uh, the Inside Studio G family and the email family just in case something happened like it did where everything, where the machine kind of melted. Now all, hopefully the bugs are out, and now we can open this up to the public if the public is interested in it. If not, you never want to push it in their face. But Friday's going to be the next uh, window for that. So Friday, people can, how do they order this? Do you know all the details? I, yeah. I probably do somewhere too. But you, you are perfect. You know what? You've had a long day. Let I've me had a long that. day. Okay. But when I got the call that it was Garth Brooks, I'm like, the answer is yes. You're Could very be. sweet. It's the longest day of my life. You're very sweet. <laughs> when you got the call that it was someone that was married to Miss Yearwood, well, that helped. She loves you. Yeah, she <laughs> adores you. So, uh, yeah, it's just garthbrooks.com and then a forward slash vinyl. Mm -hmm. And it'll get you there. Or you can go to garthbrooks.com. And it's going to take you to a place called Talk Shop Live. Talk Shop Live. And you just register. It's all you do. And then uh, what you do is you register. Uh, register your number. And then they'll uh, put it on there. And if it hasn't been taken, that's your number. So, for me, it's a six-digit number. For, for me, dates are everything. Mm -hmm. So, the anniversary of when me and Miss Yearwood got married the birthday of my children, I reserved those numbers. So when I hand this to my child, she'll know it's the only one in the world that has that number on it, and it's her birthday. So this was why it was real important to me. What happened was I wasn't ready for 
was these are real important dates for everybody, <laughs> right? Other people have your same anniversary. They sure do. <laughs> I was lucky enough to get the first shot at getting by though. <laughs> but uh, so when the machine melted that first time, it was a problem. People got a little upset because not because they're not nice people. What I what I learned that night was if you make something personal, mm -hmm. people get passionate about it really quick. So we learned that. So we're we're ready for uh, we're ready for all the dates, the anniversaries, everything the, that people can have. And uh, like I said, Friday we're going to start the machine up. Again. So Friday we're hoping there's no melts. Melt yes, uh, <laughs> you know what? We went through the second window went flawlessly. So knock on wood. Yes. Hopefully this, but again we're opening it up to the public, so we're expecting the numbers to be. Uh, a, a little higher so just hoping the machine does it and here's the great thing man the people that follow us for some reason are the sweetest people on the planet case in point new york city central park mm -hmm. we're going out of the after the show and they've closed down fifth avenue so everybody's walking well the bus can only go as fast as the people are walking there is a mounted patrolman <laughs> right outside the window <laughs> And he's my eye level because he's on horseback. So I slide the window open. I'm talking to him. I said, how many arrests did you have tonight? Central Park. Okay. Two. He had two misconducts. That was it. Out of uh, estimates are 850,000 to 1.2 million people. Gosh. That's the people that we're lucky enough to play for. So I think no matter what happens Friday, if the machine hopefully runs great, but if not, they're, they're so sweet, they're patient, and they know that we're trying. We have to, I have to ask about the astronaut. Yes, ma'am. Um, and this, if you can, y'all probably can't see, but, but hopefully you can. Oh, they zoomed in. Look at this. That is a crowd shot, which you took. Is that right? Yeah, I'm not. I, I took a selfie with me in the crowd. They got me out of it. And that's just the crowd. <laughs> but uh, I got a photo credit, actually, finally, on an album cover. Uh, <laughs> but it's teamed along with Apollo 14 photo credit. And uh, it's a... Uh, Pretty sweet, man. NASA has been an unbelievable partner. It's their 50th anniversary of the first uh, mm -hmm. walk on the moon mm -hmm. as well. So this is a big year uh, <laughs> for them, and it's sweet that they would share their photos with us. Uh, there's a DJ that every time I talk to him, he says, I know you're going to be the first guy to play on the moon. <laughs> and this is what inspired all of that right there. Well, so. if you do, can we all come? Yes, of course, <laughs> you can. <laughs> Before I open this up to, to you all and to some, some Twitter questions, what legacy, you know, that's a, it's a hard word for some big word. Her people. Some people don't like it that I know. But what, um, what do you hope your legacy is? Wow. Wow. I know. Sorry. Dang you. <laughs> I, I hope that the people that traveled all those miles sat in the freezing cold at Notre Dame. <laughs> and uh, made that special what it was. I hope the people that put in all the years know how grateful I was that they did it. Mm. That's it. I got to complete. My mom was a singer. She gave it up for the children, so we kind of got to complete her journey through this as well. Um, and now our youngest daughter's bit with a bug. She loves to sing, say, uh, songwrite and sing. So just the fact of the opportunity that you put in front of me and my family, I hope that people know how grateful we are to get to do the coolest gig on the planet next to being my daughter's dad and being Mr. Yearwood. This is the, <laughs> this is the coolest gig on the planet. Can I show you yes. this right quick? Yeah, Sorry, show I us. brought that with us. Okay, so inside these, um, inside these boxes are the things called Triple Live. So this was the soundtrack of me and Mr. Yearwood's tour. Okay. So this was all recorded in the last three years. So Do you want me to hold the microphone I, for you? You don't mind. Would so that be helpful? You talk about like the dance yeah. and stuff. So it's in here. But on a triple live record, if you're not your age, you're too young. Okay. But for <laughs> my age, you used to get these big ass records <laughs> that you got to uh, see when they were out and then read all the liner notes. And then there's a scrapbook inside of uh, everything that went on that tour. So just, uh, just a lot of fun. And this is, uh, these are our babies and we love the live records. That's kind of what we do. So, uh, putting this one together was a sheer joy. And, uh, this is the one that's in there. I think there's six different live records in these things. That is are Central Park that, happened to be there? Cause I remember listening to that. Central Park is double live. That's, that would be your, that would be your thing. Triple, triple will actually have Yankee stadium. In. Oh, cool. So it's beautiful. It's, How cool. it's gorgeous. The one minute in Yankee Stadium where it didn't rain, we took a picture. 
<laughs> All right, so we were going to start with a Twitter question. So this is from Superman's okay. gal pal. She says, Garth has always considered himself a dreamer. At this stage in his career, does he still have big dreams? If so, can you share a few with us? Heck yeah, man. I mean, that's a, I don't think you get anywhere by not dreaming. My wife looked at me the other day and she goes, how in the hell do you get everything done that you do? Because she was frustrated with the business. And I looked at her, and without even thinking, I said, I've tried to never let reality get in my way. And that's it, man. You're going to have a billion people tell you no. I think it's the first word we learn is no. Screw that. You are the one that's writing your own future. Your future is blank. I don't care what anybody says. Get out your freaking paintbrush, step up to the easel, and start painting your future. So just dream your own dreams and make them come true. You can do that. Uh, you don't. You don't need uh, you don't need somebody else to tell you what you can or can't do. So a big dreamer. And there anything is there anything that's coming up? I mean, we've just talked about a lot, but anything else that you're dreaming of um, and in your career that that you could tell us? Yes, that I can't tell you. Though, no. <laughs> but, yeah, there's there's something really cool that's coming to uh, to live, and it's going to be it's going to be something that I don't know why we haven't thought of. Uh, for years. I'm hoping we'll launch it by St. Paul, Minneapolis, which is in May. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's going to be a whole different way to view concerts. If I miss it, then hopefully we'll get it by Denver uh, and get it in there. But um, pretty cool uh, for those people who uh, like to see music in a different way. So there's always different things, and you must try them. <laughs> Sometimes you, flaw, you fall flat on your face, but these people have never called me a loser for that. They've always called me a trier mm -hmm. for that. And uh, I think... Uh, I think we like triers. I think we pull for them. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool things that are coming that technology is bringing that you just can't talk about yet or you'll just yeah. you'll look like a fool when you can't get it done. <laughs> well, we're going to keep our eye open. <laughs> All right, we have some questions from the audience. How are you? Great. What is Hi. your name? Rita. Hi, Miss Rita. Oh, my God. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I felt the same way. <laughs> um, you have so much energy on stage. What do you do to prepare yourself? And if you have any routines, and a second question is, yes, when sir. is there going to be a Central Park 2? Yes. Oh. Good question. Very sweet. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you ever mess with that part. The Central, well, we'll start with that one. It's like, couldn't have picked a better night weather-wise. The people were flawless. The recording of it was unbelievable. So it's like, you really want to push your luck <laughs> and go that. I think what you do is you try and do something like that somewhere else. I mean, you try and do something, uh, but finding a place that epic is getting more and more rare. So that was a, that was a pure thing that I'm really not sure I want to screw with. And then uh, the first thing was how do you find your energy? It's, it's pretty simple. You can be sicker than a dog. You can be... You can be going, I just, your feet hurt, whatever, because you just did a show two hours ago and you're going to do it again. But Springsteen said it best, man. He said, that walk from the dressing room to the stage, all of a sudden everything becomes brand new. You don't hurt. You sit up straight. You stand up and you're ready. Your voice is gone, but it starts to come back. And I think it's always just because this is a gift. It is. It's nothing that I can do. So as long as it's supposed to happen, I think it will. And the day that it's over, I think all the money that it's made me won't buy me another day. So I'm just enjoying that. And really, if you, if you think about this, this is a sick way to think about things. <laughs> if you play every show like it's your last, one of these days you're going to be right, right? <laughs> so I, I think that's it. I think you just go out thankful that you get to do this, and you go. It's a pleasure. Don't you think he should be on Broadway, too? All right, here's another question. Hi, my name's Brittany. I'm Miss Brittany. Nice to meet you. I've been it's a fan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Since forever. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question is, when will you be announcing more stadium tour dates and maybe anything around New York City? Yeah, here's, <laughs> here's kind of an inside kind of scoop, okay? What would, the last thing that I want to do is, Garth Brooks coming to your city. And you go, oh, my God, is he back here already again? <laughs> Don't want that, right? So right now, if you'll start to look, it's starting to line up where it was four years from the last time we were somewhere to where we're at now. So if you just do your history, you'll see kind of where 
we're going okay. just because we don't want to wear it out. I think the closest will be to you in the next probably um, two or three months, probably be Pittsburgh, as close as we'll get there. Um, uh, that'll be that'll be fun because Pittsburgh's always fun. But um, <laughs> any place. Last time. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. <laughs> so you saw it on our birthday then, yes. last time. Yes, that was that was fun. Did you have fun? Oh, I had a great time. I loved really? It. Yeah. Thank you. It was it was good. <laughs> it was it was a blast for me. I know it was a great day for me. And I will tell you this: not trying to sell anything, I'm stunned how warm the stadiums are. I'm just stunned how how close everything feels. So uh, I'm having a great time, and I might have found my new home in these places as long as people keep showing up. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey. Hello. Hey, Garth. How are you? I am great. Um, you've conquered everything, right? So after stadiums, you, don't, you said you weren't retiring. No. Okay. So what? You really, okay, you really want to, but you can't tell anybody, okay? Okay. <laughs> you know where I really want to go? Where? I want to go back to the honky tonks. We'd love to have you there. That's what I want to do. I want to do that thing where it's so loud, the neon kind of rattles on the wall. And we played Layla's uh, downtown in. Very sorry that I missed that. In Nashville, I know a lot of people that were there, and Layla's is the, one of the one of the greatest definitions was just a honky tonk. And if you're in Nashville, Layla's must be a stop for you. But playing those songs, hearing them bounce off the brick in there. Two of a kind working on a full house, rodeo, call in Baton Rouge. They were all built for the honky tonks. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably where I feel most at home at, oddly enough, are in the honky tonks. So I would love to take a look at after stadiums to, if there's still a, any kind of call for Garth Brooks music. I'd to, love to uh, build to a very big this. honky tonk. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Garth. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> How are you? Good. My name's Amy. Hi, Miss Amy. Um, I was wondering if you could only pick one song to perform, what would you pick? It would probably be The Dance, just over and over. I just love that song. Uh, but i got to tell you, man, Much Too Young, the very first single, mm -hmm. kills me. And I know these are all ones off the, off the uh, first album. If you want something a uh, little newer, uh, there's a girl named Ashley McBride that's out right now. She has a song called uh, Girl Going Nowhere that will do Guy Going Nowhere sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful song. Um, if I had only one to pick... <laughs> would it be would it be Keith Whitley's Don't Close My Eyes? I mean, what a beautiful song that is. Would it be uh, George Jones' uh, You've Seen a Picture of Me Without You? Just uh, fabulous stuff. You know, would it be James Taylor, You Got a Friend? I don't know. I mean, there's, there's so many great pieces. Yeah. yeah. It was. So my thing is, that's why I really love, uh, have you been to the show? Yes. So you guys, did you stay long enough for the house cleaning or housekeeping segment? We were, were in Yankee Stadium until two Oh, okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Then you did. <laughs> the second show was we pretty much newer. a whole house cleaning thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're out at Yankee Stadium. We're out in Wright Field. The show's going, and there's a little girl with a sign that says, You Move Me, which is an album cut for us off Sevens. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I looked at her and said, you know, first of all, I go, what do I look like, a jukebox, right? And <laughs> she's laughing, and the crowd really doesn't know how to take it. I said, you really think we're going to stop this whole production to do this album cut off an album? And she sits there, and she goes, yeah. <laughs> so everything stops. you have to at that point. And you're out there, and everyone's just soaked. But this girl's having a moment. Mm -hmm. She starts to cry. Everyone kind of lets her have her time. And that's the beautiful thing that I like. So when you say if I had one song, I think it would just be in that form, though. As much as I love the band, when it's just me and you and a guitar, mm -hmm. I like that. Too. Thank you. Thank you. She was talking that uh, you and your husband went to see the one-man show yes. in Vegas. Uh, did any of y'all get to go see the one-man show in Vegas? It was, it was, my husband took me to Vegas just to see it. Oh, no kidding. And it was a... Beautiful show, and that's why that's why, as his new agent, I thought he should go Broadway <laughs> <laughs> because I thought Broadway would be a great place for uh, I don't want to end this conversation, but they're making me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I've enjoyed myself. You've had one hell of a day. I need to get you home and in. Well, he's going to talk with us for the Today Show, too, so for a little bit. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for spending time with us today, Garth. It's been a pleasure. For tickets to see Garth Brooks live in concert, head to garthbrooks.com. Be sure to follow Garth on talkshop.live. Be notified when the next pre-order window opens for Legacy Collection, which is Friday on garthbrooks.com slash final. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in from home and from here in the studio. It was an awesome afternoon. I'm leaving inspired. Let's all give it up for Garth Brooks. I love you. Thank you.
That was so great.